All right, let me stand back just for a moment here just to give you a shot of the whole thing there. I've got the hole, like I said, uh, cut in the top of the barrel. I've set the reactor system down in there now. That's about exactly where it's going to sit. Uh, the only difference between what you see now and uh, the finished design is going to be air intake spots here where those pipes are coming up out of here. It'll be eight pipes coming out of the top of this. Uh, and also a gas output. And the gas output will probably be right out of the side right here. I uh, Maybe I'll take advantage of what this is, but I think I'll actually take it right here out of the side, which I'll show you when I'm done. Uh, first of all, when you do any of your cutting or your welding on your lid, and I'll tell you why I did the lid here in a minute, but when you do that, make sure it's cranked down dead tight. You want to make sure this thing, and take a hammer, when you think that's tight, just come around and tap it with a hammer lightly around that ridge, and it'll keep tightening with your bolt. Uh, seal that thing real tight, do some tack welds, short runs, don't get it too hot when you weld it, and you'll keep this without warping it, it'll look good, it'll seal good, and that's a big key. I mean, creosote and other things are going to fill up inside of there and, and seal that up anyways in time pretty quickly. Uh, what this allows me, instead of going into the bottom of the barrel, this allows me easy access to my reactor head. Um, you know, so if I need to make any adaptions, add, take away, anything like that, all I have to do is pull now the, the rim off here, pull the whole reactor out, and I've just got a little collar sticking off instead of a whole barrel sticking over the thing and having to reach in there and try to drill the barrel around it and all the rest of it just wasn't going to work. Uh, so I ended up doing it through the lid. I think that allows me a lot of maneuverability so if any changes need to be made to make the system even better uh, we have easy access for that. So let me weld that together and then we're going to go up here. It's one of the last stages here. And we're going to go ahead and weld the lid on this and I think I've already showed you that. But give me just a second here and I'll put the lid up there. All right, real quickly here is an update. Take you through what we've gotten done. Uh, now we've got our hole cut in the top of the barrel, uh, and then we've now set our whole reactor system all the way down in there, and I left, just so you can see, it's, it's just about right there. The bottom of all that is right there. That's gonna give us not a lot of distance between the bottom, still a foot and something, you know, in the bottom for ash catch, but that's gonna give us just enough room so the heat has to travel all the way back up to the top of the barrel, help keep that uh, reactor nice and hot in there. A lot of this will actually be insulated around certain key areas, and I'll show you that as we get there. Right now, our next step is, now that we've gotten this welded inside of there, one of the key things about welding this is do little sections. Never go around and just try to weld this whole thing around on such thin steel to thick steel. You end up warping this really, really bad. So just take a little section, move all the way over to the other side, do another little section, do a, a four post, and then go in between opposites, and just work yourself around slowly, doing little sections at a time in each spot, and you won't overheat and warp this metal. You'll try to keep the form of this lid as best as you can, because that's going to be our seal. Once it's fully cooled, don't remove this band either until this is fully cooled down. Uh, once it's cooled, I'm going to remove this band, and we can flip this thing now over. We're going to put our air intake pipes into the bottom of the reactor once again, and out of the top of the barrel here. So it's going to be easy for us to get the markings we need to put our holes through there. Let me go ahead and take that out of there now, flip it around, and I'll show you how to mount those pipes. All right, folks, we're finally getting done here with the final steps of our reactor's construction. Uh, as you can tell here, I've got all the air inlet pipes into the reactor zone. They're welded in. The elbows are in place. I even have them welded through the top of the barrel. I've mounted all that. Pretty simple to measure out, kind of mark. There is a little bit of fundamental law of why there's a distance between this and this. And in the end, probably going to have another set of pipes right about here offset from these other ones slightly higher coming in also and those will be for large draw regulation and this is our small draw regulation for the system so what I'm going to do, do now is go ahead and flip that around throw it out inside of our 55 gallon barrel uh, which is right here I'm going to cut a hole in the side of the barrel the hole saw uh, which is going to be a two inch hole and then I'm going to go ahead and drill uh, all right, so the very next step for this, now that I've got that done, is to go ahead and stick this down inside this barrel. Uh, we're going to cut a hole in the side with our hole saw, a two-inch hole. I'm going to go ahead and weld a coupler on there uh, so we can draw our gas out. I'm going to attach a low-volume uh, electric 12-volt fan up to that, and we're going to go ahead and fire up our reactor. Uh, give it a go and see how well it's going to work. So give me just a little while to throw that together, and I'll show you how it's doing when we get it fired up. 
All right, folks, one final thing here before I put it inside of the uh, barrel. You can see the cable going up right here. That cable goes to our great screen, and that'll actually be our gravity actuated great screen uh, cable right here. Goes through a very fine hole in the lid to make sure there's almost zero air leak. And right now I just have some weight hanging on it. I gotta put a hook on the tank, which we'll do once this is inside of the uh, barrel. But I wanted to show you just how that worked real quick. That was that final step inside of the reactor. And that'll allow us to dump anything. Like I said, those little prongs stop that grate from ever going any further. Give it guidance so it always comes right back up. So there we go, our reactor is finally done. Other than the other side, all the way at the bottom down there, I have to put the lid on. But I wasn't gonna do that until the very end, obviously, because it wouldn't sit level like it does now. and would have made it very difficult to manufacture the rest of this. So let me go ahead and throw this in the barrel now. We'll manufacture and set up the uh, closing door on the other side, and I'll show you that. Install the pipe, like I said before, out of the side of the barrel. Hook up our fan, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. This system's just about ready to go. So give me just a moment. I'll have that set up for you. All right, folks, our system is just about done. We've installed it inside of the barrel, as you can tell, if I back up here and let you see that. It's even got the hinged lid now on top. It's fully installed and ready to go. The last thing left, after I show you what I've gotten done, is to put our output pipe in the barrel. Everything else is ready. Uh, maybe a spring up at the top. I've still got to find one. So let's go ahead and walk you around real quick and show what we've got here. Uh, that cable that goes down to the lower grate, here's what I've got. I've got a lock washer here, or a lock nut with a washer on it and some bolts welded here. So you can pull the cable off, it goes through that small hole, and you can raise and lower and shake that grate if you ever need to. It's real easy to operate, it catches itself on those lower prongs. You'll notice there's two bolts. One's for really nice and tight, that's gonna keep it right to the rigid point. And if I want a little bit of a bounce to it, I can add it down to here, and that'll give a, just a little bit of play going down a road to allow for it to shake some of that off of there on its own. But there's our rigid mount. We'll just put the washer on there, and this lock nut, and there you go. That's done and ready to go. And we'll tighten that all the way down in the end, so that way it can't ever slip off. And that's to shake the bottom. Let me go ahead and take you up on top here, show you what we've got done. All right, so here's our hinge top. I've got a, a bad shadow here, so let me turn. It's fully hinged. We can rock it all the way back now. It's gonna keep itself open. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do now is add a spring to this on the other side of that. So there's our lid ready to go. Seals nice and tight right down on top. I got to put a pressure system up here and then also our CO2 input from the exhaust into this upper hole here. That's the last piece to get done there. But for now I'm going to plug it. Uh, you can tell the seal's dang good right here and the weight of it's really heavy so it's going to keep itself sealed. Other than a light spring, just to help that for any bouncing down the road, this is ready to go. So we're basically a sealed chamber now. Uh, we've got our ash dump. We've got our air intake pipes. Uh, we've got everything ready to go except for our output pipe, and that's our next step. So let me go ahead and get going on that, and then we'll get a fan hooked up to the output pipe, turn this thing on, and see how well it's going to work.